Hi everyone, wonderful to be with you again um, and also wonderful to introduce my very good friend, astrology buddy, Bracca Goldsmith, who really needs no introduction at all because she has a massive following on YouTube. So, and she is much, much loved. So welcome Bracca to our regular monthly astro chat. Oh, thank you so much, Pam. And I have to say mirror, mirror on the wall, of course, you two are extremely uh, loved and adored shall we say well that's that's very nice and you know we we need to feel more love in the world that would change a lot of things for sure if it? More, it, you know it was very interesting I remember reading a month or so back that Dr David Hawkins who was a brilliant psychotherapist was saying that love we think of as a kind of one-on-one -on -one romantic emotion it's actually a state of being Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? So if we yeah. could live in love as, a, as, a, as an ongoing state of being, do mm -hmm. everything from love and with our choices say, what would love choose? What would love choose in this situation? Particularly with my challenging neighbor, I always have to say, what would love choose? What would love choose in this situation? <laughs> what has she done this week, Pam? And nothing so far, but it's always, it's always bubbling um so and that's you know she is my best teacher she is my best teacher by by a long way at the moment I've had previous good teachers but she's currently one of them so when we meet these challenging people in life I think that's always a good way to look at it um what is this person teaching me because if you meet that challenge from whomever it is you know husband wife mother father sibling friend whoever if you meet them at the same level of anger or division or whatever you're just you're just coming down to a lower level of frequency and we mustn't do that we must rise above it and keep in love keep in compassion keep in non-judgment judgment is a really low frequency Yes. And even if we have to go off steaming, saying hapona pono, you know, hapona pono, the forgiveness prayer. Nevertheless, you know, that can get us back to to a to a. I often have steam coming out of my, but you know, I, I just keep on repeating the hapona pono, and that and that does the trick. So, so, but you know, she is teaching me to stay in that high frequency, whatever comes at me. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, I actually think that's very valuable. And the universe is going to keep on challenging us with our views, particularly because there's so much fixity in the astrology. Yes, yes. Bracca, have a lot of fixity this year. Yes, yes. And we have to find ways not to meet resistance with more resistance. Yeah, because that will be the temptation, won't it? Absolutely. And to find ways, I mean, I think you're very good at this, Pammy, because you're a double Pisces you are well able to find a flow of energy and go with that. Yeah. Yes, that's helpful. You know, I, I love my kind of slightly scrambled egg Pisces side because it, it, it is able to do that. And also that Pisces side doesn't have to be right. It no. doesn't have to be yeah. right. You know, it, it, we've all got different parts of our chart, but certainly the Pisces side that tends towards compassion and forgiveness does not have to, because it's a mutable sign, you know, stand its ground and say, no, you're wrong. You know, it doesn't have to do that. Whereas the fixed signs, a tendency, a lower expression of fixity is I'm right, you're wrong, because we get we get embedded into that um, veracity or conviction of our own views. Yeah. And yeah. we have a very fixed month coming up, don't we? Very fixed, what with the new moon in Aquarius. <laughs> and today the moon is in Scorpio while we're yeah. speaking. So it's like, I think a good question to ask yourself might be, um, what am I holding on to that's no good, not really serving me? It could be a view, it could be an opinion. Yeah, and it's making you ill. You might be going round with something, yeah? Sorry, go ahead, Pam. No, and that, you're so right. And this is a very, very big year of, um, of letting go. Not only is Uranus 
in Taurus until 2026, and that's about letting go of the old values, letting go of the old attachments. So that's going to be ongoing. But I mm. think particularly this this 18, this coming 18 months, 19 months with the nodes having moved into the fixed signs of Taurus and Scorpio, that's going to emphasize that fixity even more. So we've got Saturn in Aquarius all of this year. We've got Uranus in Taurus all of this year and ongoing. We've got the, the nodal axis in fixed signs as well, Taurus and Scorpio. So the the fixity of this is my position that I've reached through through a lot of thinking research I am not budging from this position it's going to be quite strong and of course that can tip into division and separation you know as you say I'm right you're wrong yes. but if we stay in that place we're not getting to we're not taking steps forward towards un unity consciousness where we eventually have to come to and we're not raising the frequency. Yeah, we we bring it down. And sometimes I think it's necessary to know if you can know um, when to walk away. Yeah, I mean a simple example today. I, there was an old an old guy sleeping in the street. Rough. It's snowing here. You know. And I thought oh, I'll just go across the road and buy him a hot drink and a, a muffin or something. So I went into the uh, cafe and the woman in there was so rude. It was like, what do you want? I mean, I, I didn't need to know that she was speaking in Greek. I got the energy <laughs> of it. Yeah, you know, it was like, boom. And it just, it, it sort of booted me out of the door. I was like, I don't think I can go in there. And I didn't want him to have the frequency of the energy that she was going to put in his coffee. So I went to another place and the lady was bright and cheerful and loving. So sometimes... You just have to not meet it. You know, if, if it hits you like that, then, you know, don't don't fight it because there's a lot of hostility out there right now. I have to say, I'm, it's quite, quite challenging sometimes to be just out and doing an odd errand. Yeah, um, because the energy, energy is, is contagious, is isn't it? And, yeah. Yeah, we, 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 you know, it's infectious. We pick it up. Um, and that's why it's very important to be around like-minded people or listening to things that are uplifting or whatever to keep reinforcing that, that positive yes. side. But I'm sure a lot of um, your followers will be interested. T tell us about what's happening in Greece right now because it's, it's quite hostile, isn't it, with the weather? Well, I mean, I did a short video about it just letting people know what was happening. And um, I think it's just to say that we we are going to go through some extremes of weather, Uranus in Taurus, and especially with the Saturn Aquarius square um, this year, we're seeing lots of extremes of weather. And I was just telling people, you know, try and have stuff in your car and, you know, just try to be as prepared as you can. Obviously, um, you, you can't necessarily be 100% prepared, but you can also work on preparing your energy. Yeah. Yes. Um, I can remember reading something that Penny Kelly did. She had a couple of workers working on her roof. And all of a sudden it started to rain buckets. And it was all, it was all that was going to all go in the house. And she said when she heard it, she just ran outside, rushed out and told the rain to stop. Just, you know, stop it. <laughs> and it did. Just it was like the... She said, I couldn't believe, you know, it was like, what? And the, and the two workmen just looked up and were like. <laughs> wow, girl power. The, master, have, master of the universe. Wonderful. We have more power than we realize if we know how to and practice because Taurus and Scorpio and fixed signs are really good at having the discipline to keep practicing something. Yeah, that's the upside. They are they are relentless, determined, tenacious, and that's the very good side of them as yes. well. It's yes. interesting. I think a lot. I mean, we've got such a fixed month coming up, not only with the the new moon in Aquarius, but then of course followed by the full moon in Leo, another fixed sign. So yes. you know, fixity is really going to be emphasised. So yes, determination, tenacity, resilience. Um, the, the nodal axis in Taurus and Scorpio, they were both very strong, even stubborn signs, particularly Taurus, you know, they're stubborn, they won't give in, but that can pay dividends because they stand their ground and that can be very positive at times. So you know, I'm, this is my red line and I'm not going any further. Well said, yeah, exactly. I mean, the Buddha apparently was born in Taurus and died in Taurus. 
Uh, it's interesting. Interesting that he just wasn't going to give up on getting to enlightenment and the end of suffering. And and yeah, and we can we can have a red line, but do it with love, do it with peace, because Taurus, as we know, is ruled by Venus, planet of love. I've just seen that in Turkey, um, I think it was yesterday, they were having a, a, a massive protest, but they were just all standing and meditating. Wow. It was completely peaceful. And of course, you can't be arrested if you're just standing meditating. There's no afraid, <laughs> there's no crime. Yeah. You know, because I, I do think with this very strong Saturn Uranus ongoing square this year and Saturn in Aquarius, that freedom and human rights issues are going to come into the fore um, to, to a bigger in, in a bigger sense. I just before we hopped online, I've noticed that um, in the UK on the UK government website, they are proposing a reform of the Human Rights Act which I believe was originally passed in um, 1948, you know, after the Second World War, Nuremberg trials, etc. And um, that has stood the test of time and defends human rights very vigorously. But apparently the UK government are planning a, a, a reform of that. And if you have any comments about that, you need to send them in to the UK government website before March the 8th. That's not being publicized right now, which is why I put it on social media. So that's an interesting development. Wow. And that's of course, so you know, energetically, we can work so, so powerfully. As, as you say, there's so much. I mean, look at what Penny Kelly did. She stopped the rain. So there's so much we can do for free at home silently um, just to work energetically and change the frequency of the collective. We're way more powerful than we know. And if a group of us get together and even more than a, a small group, a bigger group, mass meditation, then we can really start to shift the trajectory. Very much so. And, 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 uh, age of Aquarius. Yeah, that we're, we're coming. And uh, I think we really need to go more deeply into the deeper symbolism of the fixed signs. Yeah, they're very... Because that's what's coming up this month strongly, isn't it? Really? Yeah. yeah. It's like Aquarius, Leo, Taurus, Scorpio. We're on the fixed cross. Yeah. Yeah. We had the cardinal climax. We've got a fixed climax this month, haven't we? Yes. It's such a different year in that respect. So yeah. fixed really looks at well, what are the traits that you really want to develop? What are you really willing to work at? Because this is a really good time for being able to accomplish something that maybe you, you haven't been able to do, but you wanted to do. Yeah. And also, how, if, you know, how is then a, that going to reflect your change in values? Because I would bet money that pretty much everybody, particularly in the Western world, have shifted their values from a couple of years ago dramatically. Yes. And it's now much more about Uranus Aquarius energy, growing food, coming together in collaboration, sharing the joy of community, um, finding your like minded tribe. I think that's incredibly strong. We talked about this last time, whether it's online or in person, because it's easier to be strong if there are a group of you standing strong. Oh, yes, of course. And I think that's happening in different ways now that there are. I think the, the thing about the Aquarian energy, it's the appreciation of our diversity. Yeah. Allowing the diversity, even if you disagree with it or think it's crazy, but let it be there. And you still have your own group and your own tribe that yeah. you identify with within that whole. And we are all unique sparks. It's recognizing your unique contribution to the group. It's not that we're um homogeneous in any respect you know we're not thinking of a political system that promotes that it, it, to the contrary we're thinking of really having a deeper appreciation of your uniqueness but how does that gift that you have contribute to the whole what's exactly. your piece of the puzzle in moving forwards exactly oh beautifully put Pammy. yeah really and to really think about that and also to know that we have an individual job to do you you need to somehow 
hone your individuality, your authenticity. We've kind of been encouraged with, you know, we're making the transition from Pisces to Aquarius in terms of the age. So we've been kind of encouraged to, you know, meld in and to fit in and to, you know, not be too noticed and not too stand out. And now you really got to stand out in your quirkiness, in your strangeness, in your oddness. Absolutely. And, and it's interesting, isn't it? Through, through our um, schooling system, you had to behave and conform and fit in with your peers, really. And if you went on to college or university, that was broadly still the same. Or if you went into a job, particularly some kind of corporation, you know, you had to toe the line. And the, the whole social and political structure has been towards conformity. Um, but now, because I think that top-down structure very much is breaking up this year, yeah. we are stepping into our uniqueness in a way that we've never done it before. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and also with the strong Uranus, square to Saturn, and the strong Aquarius energy, Saturn in Aquarius, there's, there's a feeling of a lot of unstable energy but yes. it's both geomagnetic, but also political and social. Because I think as the old structure collapses for all kinds of reasons, that is happening at the same time as a new structure is being born. Yes. Was, this, is the, this is the tipping point this year. Tis. This is the pivot yeah. point this we're year. We're on the fulcrum. Yeah, we're, we're on that point, yeah. 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 So 2022, I think, will be massively eventful because we are going to see both the collapse of the old and the birth of the new happening at the same time and of yes. course one is affecting the other one is causing the other to some extent but they're both happening so you know we've often talked Bracker, haven't we about multiple timelines and I think we still have an, an idea that from all of that there is still one timeline you know for the collective there's still one timeline yes. and that's not the case I passionately believe that there are multiple timelines. So there are going to be people living on one particular timeline, which is much more to do with conformity. And there are other people going to be living on an utterly different timeline. And they are going to exist. They're going to coexist. Totally. Totally. And it's like the, the, the coexistence of weather right now. There's people enjoying sunshine and gorgeous. You know, we're freezing our what's off here. And, you know, so... Those are different realities, different uh, um, energies. Yeah, you're not living in a war zone or something like that. We see it on our news, but we're not actually living that particular reality. And I think even, you know, to, uh, 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 do I have a different reality to my next door neighbors, either side? Planetary different. <laughs> Planet they have no idea what I do or who I am. And that's just great. <laughs> so, that's fantastic i prefer it that way so they probably think i spend the day you know watching daytime television and reading hello magazine that's just absolutely <laughs> fine by me. lovely people but they don't know who, so that's just great but th those different timelines are gonna all exist at the same time and that's why i think we've got to get beyond this idea as, as, as been so prevalent if you listen to mainstream news you have your, the idea that is one reality and yes. there's not yeah yes yes and what reality do you want to put yourself in and that will depend upon your frequency utterly you're self-selecting you're self-selecting your reality depending on your frequency it's not even conscious it's just an automatic frequency match that the universe is providing for you Exactly, exactly, beautifully put, yes. So it's just a mirror, isn't it? It's just a mirror. So that's why if we can be conscious of keeping our frequency high, we don't have to work at, at attracting the, the right reality or a better reality, because it just happens. It's just a law, it's a law of the universe. Yeah. And, that's, and, uh, and that's what's so exciting. And I think if you can find joy in every moment, despite the, the rubble that's out there, I mean, that's mastery. You know, all of the spiritual masters said this, that we have to find joy and equilibrium irrespective of what the outer circumstances are dictating. Because if you can produce joy and equilibrium and compassion and gratitude from the inside, ultimately that's going to change your reality anyway. Yeah, totally, totally. I, 
I have nothing to add to that because you just said it beautifully, yeah, succinctly. But I, I sort of think that the difference in the in the timelines are going to be greater this year than we have ever known in our lifetime. That's my sense. Yes, yes. And I think that gradually we are going to begin to realise that we are so much more powerful than we have ever been told. We have been told that we've got to just, you know, behave and conform, as you said. But as we come to this Aquarian age, it's like anything and everything is possible. Off planet travel, off the, I mean, you know, way beyond rockets going off to wherever they're going out to, but much more sophisticated technologies, much more sophisticated ways of being that we almost can't imagine right now. Because if you would have said to somebody a hundred years ago that we'd be talking like this, over a computer to people around the world with thousands and thousands of people joining in, they would have thought you were on a different planet and a different reality. Yeah. And that's Uranus energy. Uranus rules the internet. So, and, and also we may start to see a lot more evidence of the, of the galactic and, and we will be, let's say, remembering our galactic citizenry because we're all made of stardust. That's where we've come from. And many people you know, have a remembrance of being on the Pleiades or Sirius or whatever. And it's a remembrance. So that's going to be incredibly exciting. Again, Uranus energy, if that becomes a stronger possibility this year. And I think it will very much. Definitely, definitely. And I think that we're also going to begin to find out that a lot of the history that we've been told is possibly not correct. Yeah, very much so. That very much. And therefore, things can change on a dime. If we have some uh, revelation or disclosure, or you, I mean, you channel the Palladians beautifully, you know, more and more people are starting to channel galactic beings. If personally we start to have those experiences, that can shift our whole perspective in, in a second. I'm sure it did for you once you started to channel. Yes, totally, totally rewired. I'm still being rewired. It's not ending. Yeah. It's a, an and that's a massive shift because you have to get to a higher pitch in frequency to allow that channeling to happen. Yes. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure about that. Because <laughs> you have to match them because they have to come down a little and you have to go up. Yeah. Yes. I'm not sure. I'm working on understanding that at a greater depth. That's something I'm kind of studying at the moment and trying to absorb, observe right. a little more because, yeah, I'm a bit too absorbed by it to be able to observe it. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. understand. Hard to step back and be objective when it's so much part of you. Yeah, exactly. But I think you channel naturally as well, Pammy, as well. Yeah, you're naturally channeling in your writing, in your speaking, in your teaching. I think that's what you're doing too. Well, that's very generous of you. Thank you so much, Bracca. Um, But also Uranus can, can, it's this feeling of in a moment it can shift, isn't it? In yes. a moment. Absolutely. Uh, and it's, you know, for as astrologers, in in a sense, this is a, a much more difficult year to predict. You look at Saturn conjunct Pluto in January 2020, that was relatively straightforward to predict in energy. It was heavy, contracted, dense, hard times. You know, we had it 1933 to 35 in some form, but we hadn't had it since 1517 when Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of the Wittenberg church and challenged the abuse of power of the Catholic Church. So we knew, because that was then in Capricorn, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, as we know, was in Capricorn that hadn't happened since till 2020. So what are we looking at in terms of another abuse of power? Is it the church? Well, no, maybe it's, it's to other top-down institutions, perhaps. So we could read the quality of the energy um, it wasn't going to be fun and there were no laughs in it, but we could read it quite clearly. But as soon as Uranus becomes stronger, that's the planet of surprises, the unexpected. What, you know, whatever astrologers think Uranus is going to be and whenever it's going to manifest, there will be a rug pull, won't there? It's never, never going to be what or when you think it's going to be. No way. Uh, it just isn't. 
And it, you know, because because you would look as well, you would say Uranus in Taurus, you would say it's going to hit the node at the end of July, you'd say that might have to do with the financial system, mind you, cryptocurrencies, stock market, there's been a lot of uh, changes, shall we say, with this Mercury retrograde time. Um, but it's going to be very choppy and knowing which direction it's going in is a challenge. But I think new systems of how we use money or whether we even need money at all are going to begin to emerge, would you say? Yeah, I'd absolutely agree with that. But if we if we just look, you know, whenever Uranus is in focus, let's say, and let's take that time, end July, um, early August, when it comes conjunct the North Node and Mars. I mean, mm. that could be such a range of things, couldn't it? It could be a new financial system, it could be a market crash, it could be dramatic reevaluation of currencies, it could be a massive cyber attack, it could be massive power cuts, it could be the galactics arrive, it could be earthquakes, it could be volcanoes, it could be global revolution, it could be all and perhaps more of, of those manifestations couldn't it and we won't know because uranus is the planet of the unexpected and surprises so i was going ah you thought it was going to be that ah, ah it's going to be this the maverick it is it really is you've got and, to be surprised uh, absolutely so what i would say is just cover as many bases as you can but the higher your frequency the less uranus will surprise you it will marvel you it will just thrill you because Uranus is an exciting planet. Yeah, Uranus is never boring. It's never predictable like the old Saturn type. Oh, you know, ugh. yeah, it's, it it's the new, it's the future and it's higher mind and it's connection to, you know, you might even say the galactic consciousness. Um, oh, yeah. And so that, you know, that's massively exciting. And something I'm, I've started to do every day before I open my eyes is say, let me experience something magical and miraculous today. Wow. Which is a lovely kind of intention that. to set for the day. And I've only been doing it a few days, but actually the universe is delivering very nicely on that so far. Isn't that wonderful? There's always Love a sprinkle that. of magic. And I really see Uranus as that, you know, surprising sparkle because it's very sparkly, isn't it? It's very crystalline. And this is part of the shift in frequency as well, that we're shifting from carbon to crystalline. And that's Uranus to me. Because yes. it's so clear, it has a piercing clarity, whether it's about truth and revelations, but it can also be a, a, a clarity in your structure. Yes, very much so. And I would also, with the Taurus energy, I would be working with the neck. I do a lot of exercises with my neck now just started them actually since this ingress of into Taurus because it's my my nodal return as well uh inverse um and there's so much electricity that you can create with this with all these neck exercises and spinal exercise but particularly this area of the body uh to activate so that you can activate more of the brain energy yeah because uh, Uranus is the planet that rules electricity Exactly. Of course. And Kundalini experiences. That's Uranus because it's boom. You know, it's that kind of sudden eruptive shocking energy. And of course, Taurus rules the throat chakra and the neck, doesn't it? Yes, very much so. And with the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces coming up, I think the power of our dreams is That's going to accelerate. And I believe you're coming to people in dreams, aren't you, Pammy? <laughs> Apparently. Um, <laughs> I've been very busy, apparently, um, in my dreams. You know, I have zero awareness of this, I have to say, so I don't feel responsible, really. But um, <laughs> quite a few people have written to me this week to say, you know, that I've arrived in their, in their dreams. Oh, gosh, gosh, no wonder I can feel quite tired in the morning. You know, I've been out on the <laughs> astral planes being quite busy, but I'm sure this is happening for many, many people. There's a, you know, we're doing a lot in our dreams um, in many ways to activate um, people, energies, who knows what we're doing? Because I have no idea what I'm doing out there. So, you know, that's, so you put together the, the Uranus and the Jupiter-Neptune, conjunction and that's a magical combination isn't it it is and they're very complementary the taurus and the pisces yeah 
Yeah, they really are. And I mean, this month, February, well, going to February, we've got that sextile between Jupiter and Uranus, and that becomes stronger in the second half of February. And that's about opening up your consciousness, opening up your consciousness to the galactic, sudden surprising revelations to take you higher, yeah. to think, you know, this reality I've lived in all my life isn't what I thought it was yeah. at all. Wow, exactly. And all the things that I've been taught, education, Jupiter, they're not, they're not, I was wrong. It's not the case, as you say, yeah. And that can be quite shocking, Uranus. I think there are gonna be lots of, lots of shocks and surprises. So I think an important thing to do for everybody this year, because it's gonna be so much drama, color, turbulence, one lot crashing down, the other lot built, you know, it's gonna be a lot going on, is to, is to just stay in peace. And however you find that peace, whether it's breath work, candle gazing, hugging a dog, a child, a teddy, a whatever, listening to bird song, you know, candle gate, whatever it is, find a default method of just very quickly dropping into peace because peace will serve you really well in this year with Uranus being so strong, with you know, volcanoes erupting of, of, of every kind. Yeah, and you know, you're not used, you're no use to anybody. If there is an emergency or there is something, if you're panicking and you haven't practiced peace, you see, that's the, this is the fixed sign energy. Choose what you most feel you need to practice and then do it and make yourself do it. Yeah. 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 That's really, yeah, that's really well said. And and the fixity will give you the, the determination, the persistence for sure. The tenacity to say, right, okay, don't feel like it today. I'm a bit tired, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. It's yeah. like um, uh, resisting the inertia of the fixed signs. Yes, because yes. And, and, and the tendency may be to want to kind of stick your heels in and say, no, the old is familiar. I've known this all my life. You know, I've worked hard for what all these attachments I have around me, you know, my home, my car. And, and yeah, they have been so supportive for us and given us a kind of foundation yes. for our lives in many ways. But no longer, I think, as we move forwards from here, are we going to be determined by what we own or we have we're going to be determined by our heart frequency. Wow. That's where I think we're headed. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. and I think that's so important. So the more we can get into that and it will, you know, it will feel scary as if we're just entering white water rafting sort of, eek, you know, I've let go of the, of the banks and I'm not sure I can you know, kind of control <laughs> what I'm on, but you know, whoa, you know, we're going with it because Uranus is always super fast, isn't it? Super speedy. It's yeah. now, boom, you're in the, you know, boom, and off we go. And, but, but ultimately, the more we can stay in the moment, that's the only place we can find peace and the only place we can find our power, actually. Yeah. So right here, right now, you might want to just become aware of your breathing. and relax into your physical body. Taurus is physical. I can feel a really strong vortex of energy going around that. And for the last couple of years, I had a lot of uh, crown chakra activation too. And I think people in general are feeling a lot more electricity in their body as yes. the energy shifts. Have you had that, Bracker? Yes, yes, I get that a lot. <laughs> I do. I get moved around quite a bit as well, <laughs> but you know that. Um, but yes, and, and just those moments of, just as we did there, um, Taurus loves that peacefulness. 
Stillness. Stillness. Without the words, without the need for the words. Just. Uh, it's, it's very, it's very beautiful. And I, I'm reminded of you, you had an interview with Penny Kelly and one of the things she said there, I think she's a wonderful lady. One of the things she said there was, yes. when we eat particularly raw food and we chew, it creates more electricity in the brain. Yes, it does. Yes. And Very that important. is so interesting. Yes. And there's an exercise that I do. It's a Yogananda one, actually, which is really good to do every day. <laughs> We're talking about tea. It's all Taurus energy, isn't it? It's all this energy of the body. But it's good to work on these areas is that you clench together one. So you start with the left side. You clench together the left side of the teeth for a few seconds. And then you clench together the right. And then you clench together the, the middle bits. And then you do them all together. <laughs> oh, it's nice, it's great. And that creates a lot of electricity and energy. Wow. Re-energizes the teeth. Very, very good for the teeth. And the health. Oh, that's so interesting. So mm. again, sort of chewing raw food would be a very good thing to do as well. That would activate that too. Yeah, there are different different ways of, of doing that. But I had I interviewed a wonderful dentist from the Denmark daughter who came on the uh, on my channel and she talks about teeth and the emotions and um, wow. fascinating, fascinating and that cavities, are made in the teeth through a lot of energy that you're suppressing. It takes a lot of energy to create a cavity. Yeah. It's not sugar. It's the energy of an emotion that you've... you've, you've oh, how fascinating. Won. But they're also each connected to a different meridian, aren't they? And she talks about the emotions that she's connected. Uh, and like the bottom teeth are to do with... Uh, I might get this the wrong way around. Her book is called Teeth Don't Lie. Daughter Bredgard, you'll see the interview on my on my uh, channel anyway. But the bottom teeth, if you have issues here, this has to do, I think, with people out in the world, more distant relationships, and the top teeth, I think, are to do with closer ones, or it's the other way around. But and then she has an analysis for each tooth. Yes. Wow, that's phenomenal. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot that we can do to be more empowered, and I think there's a lot of powerful light workers out there like you who are helping people to become empowered and not feel like victims of, of the old negative energy of Pisces. We move yep. to the higher energy of Pisces, which is the empowerment of the magical child where everything is possible. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, that's really wonderful. I think with Uranus in Taurus, Taurus being the, the body, the human body, there are going to be a lot of new healing technologies and, and they may already exist. They're just not publicly available yet that are, are going to be to do with um, light, sound, frequency. They're all going to be frequency based because ultimately everything in the universe is vibrating energy. We're just going to move into a different medical system, I think, across the world that is actually a remembering of the original natural medicine, but that recognizes frequency as the principal component much more overtly. Yes, yes, exactly. And that with certain powers, I mean, Penny Kelly, Penny's coming up a lot today, that's all right. I think she's wonderful too. Um, she said in the, the old days, in ancient days, um, if the indigenous needed a plant, let's say for a medicine for somebody, and they couldn't find that plant, then they would ask another plant. They'd say, could you please step in for this? And you would need to give it about 20 minutes or so. This is what Penny says. And that plant will step in and will create the energy needed for the medicine to help that person. This is the indigenous knowledge. That is phenomenal. But doesn't it show the power of the mind and the power of intention? I mean, how powerful is that, that the plant can actually change its, I don't know what it would be, its consciousness or its, its medical benefit frequency. by doing that, its yeah. frequency, so simply by a human being setting an intention, I mean, that's mind blowing. It is. So there's so much out there. And Lynn McTaggart, all the work she does with intention. So there are some, there's, there's waves 
of amazing workers going on with the body and the physical and the plants and the earth and the animals, all this Taurian energy and the food. Yeah. It's like, wow. And so many possibilities are rising. Um, and I think we need to stay open to uh, moving into an arena of possibility. And that, you know, if a doctor gives you, you know, the sentence of death, I've had so many people write to me recently that, you know, they were given a, a sentence of death and they've turned it completely around. And I think you've probably had similar experiences. Yeah, I've seen many of those in um, in Dr. Joe Dispenza's workshops. I've witnessed many, many, many miracles with my own eyes and could just had to blink, you know, could barely believe what I was seeing. And that really is sort of stepping into a magic zone. So it's very interesting, isn't it, Bracket? Because yeah. on the one hand, the lower expression of Uranus in Taurus can be more engineered food, more industrialized food. But on the other hand, it can be it can be understanding the frequency of the food so we can enhance its natural growth. I think in certain parts of the world, they're um, almost, the, this is where they're using old warehouses and they've, they've got the plants on different levels with different colored lights because they know that some vegetables prefer a particular frequency of light. And so they've learned how to do that to enhance the natural growth of the plants. But it isn't, artificial really in that sense because it's all using natural frequency natural energy exactly. you know? exactly. and that's really really exciting so i think there's a whole trajectory there a whole science to be discovered or remembered that will really enhance our our health going forward in in, in super fast ways i mean really fast ways yeah yeah. Woohoo! This is exciting. We live in exciting times. We, we really do. do. We yeah? do. Difficult, yes. Challenging, yes. Exciting, yes. Magical, yes. Yeah. And just keep on focusing on what you want to create, not on what's collapsing. If you if you focus on what's collapsing, you are energizing it. You're you're feeding it. You're activating it. We unless you want that to continue, which I don't think any of us do. No. feed the new feed what you want to create even yeah. if it's just as feelings i want to feel free i want to feel joy i want to feel gratitude i want to feel love love yeah you, whatever you want to feel want to feel laughter you know want to enjoy laughter. just the feelings if you can't define the detail yeah. that is a big step towards creating the new earth beautiful yeah wow that's wonderful, Pammy. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's so with the joy, because we kind of spark each other, I, I think, Bracker. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. You sparked me. So thank you yes. very much. Uh, it's just a real pleasure always to be with you. So grateful that we're friends. Yeah. We share a lot. And um, I mentioned <laughs> the adventure briefly that we had done in southwest France on that very first time I... <laughs> I met you. It was quite a week of adventure. That's all I'll say. <laughs> well, I'm excited that we're going to be doing a webinar together soon as well. That'll be a first. All new things are happening. Yes. Yeah? Push yourself to do new things, uh, guys. Do something new. Do something different. Chop it around. Change it around. Yeah. It's very good for your telomeres as well, isn't it? To change the pattern of the day. And they, that, they determine your longevity. Absolutely. If you're doing new things, new thinking, new habits, or even shifting your routine around, that actually benefits your telomeres. Yes, it does. So feed your telomeres. <laughs> That's a brilliant, brilliant point to end on, Bracco. Thank you so much. That was thank you. Thank you. Lots of joy between us. Have a wonderful, yeah. wonderful evening, and I hope it gets warmer in Greece. Lots of love, Pammy. Lots of love. You take care. Bye.